according to scripture, wives are instructed to submit to the authority of their husbands. Now, there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to biblical submission. So let's take a look at what submission means in a general sense. Submission is yielding control to an authoritative entity. So if we further break that down, we look at the prefix sub, it means lower or underneath, but that's positional. It does not pertain to worth, value, or ability. And you can look at it in the sense of the structure of a building. The foundation can be located on the lower level, but it's extremely valuable because every floor, all the way up to the penthouse that we love the view from, has to be built on this foundation and the foundation has to be strong because if you build off of a weak foundation the slightest wind can cause the entire structure to fall now mission is an important assignment so when we look at it from a biblical perspective it's the works that has been assigned from God that we need to carry out so a wife from a biblical perspective is the foundation support to a husband who is carrying out an important assignment from God. So wives should take great joy because being submissive from a biblical perspective is honorable, it's valuable, it's important, it's, a, it's an essential element towards glorifying God. It is the world that has this warped definition of submission and presents it in a condescending manner to be a position that has little value. However, in the biblical sense, God has instructed wives to come under the authority of their husbands and God provides this authority to protect wives. Women are more often easily deceived, and God provides us authority to protect wives from the influences of the world, to protect wives from sin nature, to protect wives from evil. An example of this in today's society is the trend of getting cosmetic surgery and unnecessarily risking your life. I mean, even if it's a small percentage, women are being deceived to possibly lose their life and leave behind their children, leave their parents, leave their loved ones. As a husband that has been granted authority, it is your responsibility to protect your wife from the ways of the world. So, you know, it means like, hey baby, I know it's a small chance, but the fact that you could lose your life or be permanently disfigured is not something that I'm willing to risk. So you have to be understanding, loving, but you also have to be a deliberate leader. God's authority is protection, but as a woman, you may still experience challenges due to your husband's imperfections. But you have to remember to keep faith and trust that God will always do what is best for you, even when you do not understand. So let's take a look at what type of man a woman should submit to from a biblical perspective. A woman should submit to her husband, not her boyfriend, not her man, not her boo thing, her sneaky link, her boo boo, whatever you want to call it, to her husband. You are to be a helper and the foundation and support a man that has first submitted to God. And what that says is this man is a God-centered, God-fearing man and God is his foundation. You are submitting to a man with a clear and concise foundation. I am a God-centered man. God is my foundation. I plan to lead from a biblical perspective. I plan to use the Bible as a guide for our relationship and our lives. It's clear. You should also submit to a man that has a concise and clear mission 
that is aligned with God, even when you submit to a God-centered man, you need to understand that your husband's authority is limited. And should your husband ask you to go against the word of God, God's authority always overrides your husband's delicated, limited authority. It's extremely important to submit to a man with a clear and concise foundation so that everyone understands their respective roles. And the foundation also serves as a source of accountability. Now, when you submit to a man that is not God-centered, you are then straying away from God's ultimate plan and you are now acting on your own accord. That can lead you to a relationship filled with toxicity and despair. And that is not God's will. God's will is for the wife to be protected, to be in a loving union, to live a purposeful, meaningful, and joyful life. The purpose of relationships from a biblical perspective is for two individuals to unite and become one flesh and then become one with God. So both man and woman should have a continuous desire to help their loved one become more holy or godlike. Both individuals strive to glorify God by being obedient, joyfully, lovingly serving their loved one without any personal expectations. Here are some key elements in a biblical relationship. Let's start off with edification. Edification is spiritual, moral, intellectual instructions. Sanctification is the act or process of becoming holy. Progressive sanctification is continuously striving to be more holy. Mutual sanctification is when two individuals come together to help each other become more holy. So two individuals must first submit and become one with God in order to achieve righteousness, unity, and harmony within their relationship. God is holy. God is the ultimate good. So in order to truly have a good relationship, you have to have God in it. When your relationship is disconnected from God, that's when you invite toxicity. Your relationship will be superficial. Discord and conflict will be common. Issues will remain unclear and unresolved. Wrong ideas will remain uncorrected. Bitterness and anger will set in. The ability to make wise decisions will be inhibited. And that's because you have two self-centered individuals who are proud and lustful in the relationship. And their loyalty is only to themselves. They have this attitude of my way, my feelings, my expectations, my needs, my plans. And when their needs are not met, they justify going outside of the relationship or leaving. From a biblical perspective, you must first commit to commitment. And that means that that is a commitment that is not fleeting. That is the type of commitment that is not based off of personal conditions. You make a commitment before God that you will love the other person throughout the rest of your life and you will help them and continuously help them to become more holy. It's the type of commitment that when they fall to sin, you remain loyal and you want to restore and heal them regardless of the type of sin. You don't pick and choose. It's the type of commitment that you remain loyal throughout any unforeseen misfortunate events. And that does not mean that you are a doormat or you put up with sin or you put up with the type of sin that's a danger to your life because there is scripture that guides us to deal with those types of sin. But what it does mean is that you remain faithful and obedient and carry out your duties regardless if the other person is carrying out theirs. What it means is that you remain hopeful and you do not take on the attitude of once a liar, always a liar, once a cheater, always a cheater. The world will tell you that the tiger cannot change his stripes. And that may be true, but you understand that God can change the stripes of a tiger and you do not 
limit the power of God. That is biblical commitment. A committed relationship that is aligned with God and follows a biblical path is a beautiful thing. Now, I don't want to be misleading because even two God-centered individuals in a relationship will be met with challenges. But what it does mean is that disagreements can be handled quickly without conflict. Problems can be clarified and resolved. And wrong ideas can be corrected through biblical reproofing. Reproofing is an expression of rebuke or disapproval or criticism. A biblical reproofing is letting someone know what they're doing is wrong with the intent to restore them back to a right relationship with God. And you can use scripture as a reference to identify the sin and correct the sin. You choose the right time to communicate. You communicate in a loving and respectful manner. This type of commitment, it just makes your relationship stronger and more meaningful. Companionship is enjoyed more and harmony is present. God's blueprint is perfect. You have two God-centered individuals coming together. They make a commitment to God, which allows them to diligently learn and carry out their respective roles. Because these two individuals are God-centered, their purpose is to glorify God, and they do this by committing to mutual sanctification, loving and serving one another without any expectations. The God-centered husband is a God-centered man that nourishes, cherishes, and loves and sacrifices for his wife as God the Son does for the church. And the God-centered wife submits, respects, and glorify her husband. And I always say that's important to glorify your husband because should a lion attack the family, all that glorifying juices the man up and, and gives him that extra courage to think that he can fight off the lion and he wants to do it and he's willing to sacrifice his life because he adores his wife and his family. That's such a beautiful thing. He loves and adores his wife because she is a God sent to wife who wants to do everything to please her husband, even in the little things. If, if her husband has a particular hairstyle that he likes, she's like, then I'm gonna get that hairstyle. Because she understands that her curves are meant to satisfy her husband. Her curves are meant to keep her husband intoxicated by her. And this is her form of protection for her husband. This helps keep her husband away from outside temptation. It helps her husband avoid immorality. God's blueprint for love and relationships is truly perfect. The fact that if we're obedient, we get to experience harmony in an intimate relationship similar to the relationship of the Holy Trinity is amazing. We get to experience a relationship that sees beyond fading beauty, a relationship that is faithful even in sickness and misfortunes. And that is truly amazing. That is one of the most beautiful things that we are privileged to experience. But we all have the freedom of choice. And the choice is yours. I know what I'm choosing. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. So thank you for listening to me. I love you neighbors. 
I appreciate you and may peace be with you.